In chapter 3, section 7, we have linear inequalities in two variables, and that's the difference here. And we're finishing out algebra 2, standard number 2, where actually we did the equalities yesterday in the previous lesson, but today we're picking up the inequalities. And in order to do that, we're going to have to do some graphing. So let's take a look at our first graph. We're graphing 6x minus 2y is less than or equal to 12. And the little shortcut I like to use for graphing is the x and y intercept methods. So if I put in 0 for x, we see that negative 2y is less than or equal to 12. Pretend it's equal to for a moment. And you'd solve for y and find out that y is negative 6. So that's where the graph is going to cross the y-axis. All right, let's try to find out where the graph is going to cross the x-axis. To do that, we're going to replace y with 0 and solve 6x equals 12, and we find out that x is equal to 2. So that's where it crosses the x-axis and the y-axis, the x and y-intercepts. Here, because there's an equal sign, we need a solid line between the two points. But because there's a less than or a greater than, we need to decide which region to shade in, everything to the left or everything to the right. Sometimes students get confused, so I always like to tell them to guess and then to check your answer to see if it works. When you guess, I like to guess the point 0, 0 if it's not on the line, because it's very easy to work with. If we put in a 0 for x and a 0 for y, 0 minus 0, check to see if that's true or false. Is 0 less than or equal to 12? Well, it's not equal to 12, but it's less than, and so the entire thing is true. 0 is less than 12 is true. So that means if this point is true, everything on that side of the line will also be true, and you'll shade in everything on that side of the line. So we checked 6 times 0 minus 2 times 0 is less than or equal to 12. That's true. So we shade in everything on that side of the graph. And we do have a solid line because there's an equal sign. We want to include all the points on the graph itself. All right, let's look at another one. In this particular case, 2x plus 4y is greater than 8. There is no equal sign. Let's put in a 0 for x and find out where it crosses the y-axis. So if we do that, 4y, pretend it's equal to 8. We find out that y is equal to 2, and that's where it crosses the y-axis. Put in a 0 for y to find out where it crosses the x-axis, and pretend it's 2x equals 8. That would give us x equals 4. So we located the y-intercept, the x-intercept. If there's no equal sign, we do not want a solid line. We want a dotted or a dashed line. And so that will be our dashed line, which represents we want everything up to the line, but not including it. Again, to decide which side to shade in, whether we want everything below the line or above the line, I like to pick the point 0, 0. And so 2 times 0 plus 4 times 0 to see if that's greater than 8 is true. Is 0 plus 0 greater than 8 true? Well, actually, it's false. So in that case, it's not the side of the line where 0, 0 is at. It's the other side. So we'll shade in everything on the other side of the line. And there's our graph of 2x plus 4y is greater than 8. Again, it has to be a dotted line signifying everything up to the line but not including the line itself. All right, let's graph another one. y is less than 4. And in this case, it always, if there's no x in the equation, it never crosses the x-axis. It's going to be parallel to the x-axis, going through the point y equals, where y crosses the y-axis at 4. There is no equal sign, so again, we wanted a dotted line. In this one, we can reason out the answer pretty much. Where do we find points less than 4 on the number line? Well, less than 4 on the y-axis is everything below the line. There's 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1. So we can reason in that we're going to shade in everything below the line as part of our answer. All right, so there was a spe special situation where there was no x in the inequality. Now, what we want to do now is to take one inequality and branch from there to several inequalities. So colored pens and pencils will be helpful. Let's uh, color code and start with the blue one. Perhaps we want to get in the slope-intercept form. 
So we'll subtract 2x from both sides and have y is greater than negative 2x plus 5. And plot that. So we know that crosses the y-axis at 5. That's the y-intercept. Slope of negative 2 means down to right 1, down to right 1, down to right 1. A whole bunch of times. There is no equal sign, so we want a dotted line. And then we want to determine which side to shade in. I'm going to try 0, 0, just because it's easy. And I'm going to try it in the original equation to see if 0 plus 0 greater than 5 is true. And actually, it is not. It's false. So the point where 0, 0 is is not the side of the line I want to shade in. It's everything very simply on the other side of the line. All right, let's come back to the red. 3x minus y greater than 2. If we get that in a slope-intercept form, we'll subtract 3x from both sides. And I did a step in my head, so that's negative y is greater than negative 3x plus 2. Multiply everything by negative 1 gives me y is less than, remember we changed the direction of the inequality, 3x minus 2. So that crosses the y-axis at negative 2, has a slope of 3, so we're going to go up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1, and up 3, right 1. There's no equal sign in this inequality, so again, a dotted line. And we need to determine which portion to shade in. I'm going to try 0, 0 again and see if 0 is less than 0 minus 2 is true or not. It's actually false. So I don't want the portion of the graph that's to the left of the red line. We want the other side. So everything to the right is shaded in. Since it's a system of inequalities, we have to figure out where the two overlap. And I've shaded that in in yellow like a highlighter here. So it's everything up to but not including the red line, everything up to but not including this portion of the blue line, and everything else where they overlap. That's the solution to my system of inequalities. All right, let's look at our last system of inequalities for today. We have several good things going here. x is greater than or equal to 0. y is greater than or equal to 0. 3x plus 2y is less than or equal to 12. And x minus 2y is greater than or equal to negative 4. So let's start color coding those. x is greater than or equal to 0 is actually x equals 0 is the y-axis. Greater than is everything to the right. Now, and again, if we shaded everything in with so many inequalities, we'd get it confusing. So I'm just going to make little arrows signifying everything to the right half of this graph. All right, for the brown color coded, y is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, actually, y equals 0 is the x-axis. And greater than is everything above it, so I'm going to put these arrows. So far, where it overlaps is quadrant 1, everything in the top right corner. But let's look at the blue line. If I put in a 0, for, I mean the red line, I'm sorry. Put in a 0 for x, we get 2y is equal less than or equal to 12. We solve that, we get y crosses the y-axis at 6. So I'm going to put a red dot on the y-axis at 6. Let's put in 0 for y and find out where it crosses the x-axis. And that, of course, is at the point 4. There is an equal sign, so I do want a solid line when I connect my dots. And I'm guessing 0, 0, but I did it in my head, so let me reason that out with you. 0 times 3 is 0, plus 0 times 2 is 0. 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 12. That's true, so it's everything below and to the left of the red line. So, so far I've got a little triangular region, but we haven't finished our graph yet. So let's do the blue. For the blue, if I put in a 0 for x, negative 2y is greater than or equal to negative 4, solves to gives me y equals 2, and that's where it crosses the y-axis. If we put in a 0 for y, x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And that's where it crosses the x-axis. There is an equal sign, so I want a solid line. And I'm going to try 0, 0 again. 0 minus 0 is greater than or equal to negative 4 is true. So everything below and to the right of the blue line is what I want. Now for the final answer, we have to figure out where everything overlaps to the right of the black above the brown, below and left of the red, and below and right of the blue, 
And that gives me this nice little quadrilateral region, which I'm going to kind of shade here in green. So that's our look at solving inequalities and solving systems of inequalities, which we have to do by the graphing method.